A pattern change going to be ushered into the United States over the next week, moving the conveyor belt of storms to a new location and with it, new weather for many. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Monday, and hopefully we're having a wonderful start to the week. And uh, we've had a pretty active stretch here to start June. We've had this big ring of fire conveyor belt of uh, instability and storm fuel, and with that severe weather, I'll tell you, though, this week it's on the move, and it's going to start to do what a lot of things happen in the month of June, and that's move northbound throughout portions of the country and with that we're going to see a bit of a pattern change for a lot of us. We're going to break that down for you in today's video. Now if you haven't already go ahead like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date on the channel as we continue to track this pattern change. All right let's go ahead and just dive right onto it and start with our upper, uh, excuse me, our upper level rather water vapor loop here on this Monday and you can see we've got this big upper level low piece of energy really parked right over the Midwest in the Great Lakes. That has been the storyline over the past couple of days. We've been talking about how that has suppressed our storm track further south. And uh, again, it's kind of moved our conveyor belt down there with it. And you can see that corridor of storminess. We've got one area out here uh, into the southwestern United States, another corridor down near the Gulf where we're getting another boost of uh, moisture values. And with that, we have two areas of uh, higher in severe weather potential. Now, also, we are seeing some severe weather uh, today kind of wrapping around this low. We're getting this corridor of moisture and instability uh, to kind of come up out of the Gulf here. And that has led to some strong to severe storms from Michigan. Michigan, uh, all the way up into the Ohio Valley and even into Western PA and Western New York State. As we have discussed, we talked about that yesterday and sure enough, come into light today here on our models. Now you can see it quite well on radar imagery as well. Uh, here it is. We've got a lot of rain here east of the Mississippi. Now not raining for everyone and not a washout uh, really for anybody, but you can see those showers and storms. Michigan getting in on the action. Uh, the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley is getting in on the action. And even uh, the Gulf Coast line and from the Florida Panhandle through southern Georgia all the way back towards southern Mississippi, seeing some of these showers and storms today. All of that uh, being caused by, again, that upper level spin and that Gulf and Atlantic moisture coming together. And then also seeing some moisture even building in out of the Pacific here uh, that is leading to some shower and storm activity over the Four Corners region. So that's what we're seeing out there right now. Let's swing on over now and take a look at the upper level map and see how that may be influencing our forecast over the coming days. All right, here's our upper level map to start the week. And well, yeah, guess where the big bullseye is, where I just showed you on satellite, just a whole lot of spin, a lot of vorticity, a lot of energy up here near the Great Lakes currently. Again, it's just this big old circle, kind of like an eyeball looking at you. And that's what's, again, driving our weather right now. But it's a little more complicated than that now. That's what's driving the rain chances up into the Great Lakes and even into portions of the Northeast. But it's actually a little piece of energy being rotated around that. Look at the south here. Uh, you can kind of see where we've got that area circled on the map. That that's an area of energy that actually uh, started all the way back near Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and New Mexico a day or two ago. And is again, a follow that highway or that train, if you will, in the atmosphere here and is now leading to increased shower and rain chances throughout the southeast today. Uh, now, both of these pieces of energy are still going to be hanging around by tomorrow for our Thursday afternoon or our Tuesday, rather, not Thursday. Uh, you can see here's that upper level piece of energy. And actually, let me back it up a little bit more to like tomorrow morning. Uh, you can see See, here's that upper level dip that's still producing plenty of vorticity, plenty of lift here in the northeast for showers and storms, uh, but still rocking that kind of band of vorticity into the southeast, specifically along the southeast coastline from Georgia up to about Philadelphia or so, we'll say, uh, where we are seeing again a little bit more enhanced spin in the atmosphere and lift that could lead to another day of some showers and storms. And you'll see that as we go ahead and flip on over to our Storm Prediction Center outlook for the next couple of days. Again, the rest of today, we are rocking some showers and storms, some of which are severe, really a big slight risk today. So uh, this tells me that just kind of a lot of flow in the atmosphere. There's not one specific area that uh, maybe has higher instability or wind shear or a higher mixture of parameters for severe weather, just kind of a big area of unsettled weather. Now, this is new into Michigan. Uh, again, I showed you that line of showers coming in off the Great Lakes and into the state here. Uh, Lansing, Jackson, back over towards Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, Saginaw, Bay City uh, is under that slight risk for severe weather. Straight line winds would be the main threat, but some hail and even an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. That's really the story for everyone today, colored in on the map. Much of the southeast, much of the Ohio Valley, 
Valley up the Appalachia chain, uh, even into Pennsylvania. If you take a look at the tornado threat today, again, not very high. We've got a couple little 2% areas, not anything that I would be overly concerned about, but could see a quick spin up, I think especially up here into Western PA, uh, even into Western New York State, Buffalo, Rochester, back down towards West Virginia and the Parkersburg area. A little bit more wind shear up that way today, so we'll watch that. And then uh, down south towards the Gulf Coast, again, a quick spin up cannot be ruled out. Uh, not going to really see any significant tornadoes though today, and that's obviously good news. The wind threat though, again, that's the bigger thing. Really, everyone that was in that categorical risk that is being driven off of a wind threat today. You can see basically the same map just for wind. And then the hail threat today, a little bit lower for most of us, except for out here in West Texas, Midlands, San Angelo, Big Spring, Andrews, even into Hobbs, New Mexico, back down towards Big Lake. Could see an enhanced hail risk and even a significant hail, maybe baseballs or larger, uh, although not uh, not really strangers to that out there in this part of the country, but still can do uh, big time damage. So watching that for today. Now getting it into tomorrow, uh, notice two areas to watch again in the southeast and then into uh, Texas and New Mexico, more of a uh, kind of semi synoptically driven, semi mesoscale driven threat out towards the west. We do have a new upper level disturbance working in. It's quite weak, though, so uh, it'll provide just enough lift in the upper levels over a very unstable summertime uh, atmosphere here at the surface that we could see strong storms tomorrow. In the east, this more driven off that synoptic setup. Again, that little ribbon of vorticity I showed you earlier uh, here into the mid-Atlantic from, again, about southern Jersey all the way down towards South Carolina. The tornado threat tomorrow, uh, again, not very high. Maybe a quick spin up here into West Texas. Again, I doubt we'll see a significant tornado, but I could see a brief spin up. The wind threat, again, going to be something we need to watch in both areas tomorrow, as well as the hail threat, which once again could be a little bit higher here into Texas, uh, where we've just got a lot of surface cape, which could really enhance these updrafts. Now, let's take a look at day three. Uh, so this would be for your Wednesday. Notice things completely shift. The east really begins to calm down. South Texas still watching a couple areas, but notice up north, new regions to watch here on the map uh, from the northern Rockies, even back into portions of the Midwest. And we'll talk about why that is coming up in just a moment. But before we do, let's swing on over and take a look at some mesoscale models for the next day or so. All right, here's the brand new hot off the press high resolution rapid refresh model. And I really do mean hot off the press. This uh, just came again out right now when I'm recording this right around four o'clock Eastern time. And uh, you can see we've got a lot of showers and storms in the east like we've seen on radar. Again, that scattered severe weather threat through the evening hours. So if you're watching this at any point, uh, during, well, the evening, again, that could produce some strong to severe storms. Let's time it out for you and get it into tomorrow as well. Uh, here we go. We've got uh, all that work in east eventually clearing out west to east. So I think by the overnight, it's really the Appalachia chain eastbound towards the eastern seaboard. It's going to see a higher end threat of some showers and storms from the northeast all the way down towards the Gulf Coast of the Florida Panhandle could see some of those showers. Now, uh, also a little area of uh, kind of a line of storms there in the West Texas, as we talked about this evening, could produce some strong wind and some hail as well. Uh, you'll notice we get into tomorrow, that energy still hanging around enough. This is tomorrow evening, another burst of instability and lift combined could lead to some strong to severe storms. The Chesapeake down into the Carolinas, the I-85 corridor, uh, even into the Gulf Coast states, again, a couple strong storms, couple strong storms storms potentially up into Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, the Hudson Valley of New York State, and then back down towards the Scranton area and into the Alleghenies would not be surprised to see, again, some stronger storms for your Tuesday evening. That pushes east through the overnight. Notice, again, that big complex of storms into Texas, a new piece of energy working in, and uh, that'll get us all the way here into Wednesday morning, and then check out Wednesday afternoon. The Gulf Coast remaining active. Uh, you can't see it on this map. I'll show it to you on the next map. But we do have a new upper-level disturbance over Texas by that point, which is going to flare up some shower and storm activity. Houston, Louisiana, maybe even up into Dallas, Fort Worth by Wednesday, and just staying pretty stormy there really along the Gulf Coast, although not a washout. Again, it's your classic summertime pattern. Could be a little rainier than just that over Louisiana uh, and southeast Texas, but generally speaking, uh, pretty run-of-the-mill summertime pattern with a little bit of enhancement from an upper-level piece of energy. And then all eyes turn to the northern plains by the time we start getting to the middle of the week. All right, let's swing on over now. Let's zoom things out. Let's talk about the rest of this week, talk about that pattern change and how that could affect your forecast throughout the rest of this week. 
All right, here's the upper level map for Tuesday afternoon. That's tomorrow. And uh, again, we've still got this dip in the jet over the east, but notice what happens throughout the week ahead. We're going to really switch things up, I think. And uh, notice here we go by Wednesday afternoon, uh, that dip in the east begins to fade and we start rocking a pretty classic zonal look. Uh, and we've got this little piece of energy over Texas trapped under it. So this is going to mean a couple things. One, uh, again, unsettled weather down here, Texas, Louisiana, that general area along the Gulf Coast a little bit of enhanced upper level lift uh, due to that little system. Again, it's not super strong. You won't expect a super strong system that far south this time of the year, but it's enough combined with all that summertime heat at the surface. Again, ongoing afternoon thunderstorms, some of which could become severe, will be something we need to watch. That's the first thing this means. The second thing this means is, generally speaking, this is a pretty big ridge, so it's semi-zonal flow, semi-ring of fire flow, and that ring of fire going to move north, and the new train tracks are now going to cross right through the northern tier of the country, and that's going to mean a new corridor of severe weather potential just in time for peak severe weather season into the northern plains. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, places like Montana. Montana, uh, into Wyoming, up into the Dakotas, uh, to be determined if that can even slide into the Northeast. I think it's possible. Uh, so that'll be one corridor of storms to watch. And even into the East, though, again, that little piece over Texas is going to be pesky enough. Afternoon thunderstorm chances will continue even into the Southeast by the second half of this coming work week. Now, I think we'll get a little bit of a break in between. Again, it's rainy today, potentially rainy for some tomorrow. I think by Wednesday, Thursday, uh, the Ohio Valley gets a small break, but then by later in the week, again, this little system down near Texas is going to produce enough lift in the upper levels over that region of the southeast, combined with that summertime heat and humidity at the surface, again, could really put a wrench in your forecast plans. Uh, that's through the end of this work week, getting to the weekend. I mean, we just start to really build in this big ridge, that big old ring of fire, the Northern Plains, again, severe weather season and hot and humid for many of us looks to be the theme here as we kind of look at that general pattern. All right, now let's talk about some ingredients for severe weather that could line up later this week and who could see some rain and who's going to be hot and humid uh, coming up next. All right, so let's look at surface thunderstorm fuel. Again, this will be a big component in who still sees severe weather. Uh, and we'll kind of move it ahead here. Let's get this into tomorrow, Tuesday afternoon. Again, notice that corridor where we've still got some instability into the southeast, kind of riding the eastern seaboard, and then still quite humid and muggy into Texas. And guess what? That's where we could see severe weather tomorrow. So the math checks out there. Uh, always enjoy it when it does. That's Tuesday, uh, again, the 10th of June. Now let's keep it going and watch what happens. That cape of that instability stability surging northward into the plains, like I said, with a strong jet stream and cape and instability coming out of the south, that's a recipe for severe storms. Nebraska, the Dakotas, potentially Wyoming, Montana, a uh, classic northern high plains severe weather season looks to really get going here as we get towards the middle of June, which is, well, the second half of this week. So uh, you can see that beginning there. Still, though, also notice we've got thunderstorm fuel into the deep south, the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana. Louisiana. So with that little disturbance over Texas and some surface fuel, showers and storms could still be a concern in the afternoon. That gets us all the way to Friday here, picture next to me. Uh, again, you can see that axis of instability hanging on and doesn't look to go anywhere into the northern plains. In fact, continues to surge north by the weekend and still enough instability in the southeast that we will need to watch for at least a couple strong to severe storms. I mean, check this out. This is by this coming Sunday in Nebraska. Yeah, 5,000 joules per kilogram of Cape. That's a lot of instability. And with the jet stream acting up as well, that brings us to the next map. This is severe weather ingredients or combination of uh, instability, wind shear, and all the things you need for severe weather. What do the, uh, the European ensembles think here in terms of potential severe weather? Now, let's take a look at it. So uh, this is tomorrow afternoon. Again, not a big severe weather day. A couple areas, the kind of mid-Atlantic there and out towards West Texas, uh, not a big deal. But watch what happens as we move the map ahead. Yeah, the Northern Plains begin to come alive. Now, not a, a huge threat area right now. Again, I just showed you the Cape. There's a ton of that, but the ensembles, uh, not quite as excited as that operational run yet. And again, instability is not the only thing. You need the right kind of wind shear. And uh, we are still about five days away or so. So, you know, the model's going to need some time to get some data. And uh, I will mention we are missing uh, some pretty key balloon launches up here as well right now. So we'll see how that might affect the models um, right over that region. But uh, 
Again, I, I can't control that. So uh, you do see, though, ingredients do begin to increase for severe weather potential up into the northern plains by the second half of this week. And folks, it hangs on. This gets us all the way about seven to 10 days from now. Iowa and Minnesota, Wisconsin, that same corridor uh, staying active there into the northern tier as that ring of fire kind of works on through. So I think that's going to be a big theme here over the coming days, uh, really over the next week or two, even up into that part of the country. All right, let's take a look at a couple more maps and then I'll let you go on this Monday. All right, here's the latest European model, again, brand new from this afternoon. And uh, maybe it's the winter weather lover of me, but the first thing I see is that little 540 line and a little bit of frozen precipitation well up into central Canada. Uh, not coming for anyone probably watching this video, but uh, you know, it's always fun to pretend that we're still forecasting winter weather. Uh, but unfortunately, we're talking about the ring of fire instead, which uh, not my favorite thing to forecast, but uh, part of the job, right? So uh, you can see here's Tuesday. This is Wednesday. Notice already beginning to get active up there. We've got showers and storms up into South Dakota, Nebraska, uh, the Twin Cities down through Des Moines. That's Wednesday. And just notice in general, the pattern stays active into the northern tier as that ring of fire begins. By the time we hit Friday, we're going to start to get rainy again in the southeast. Now, less of a severe weather threat down here. Really not much wind shear to speak of, but a lot of instability still. So downburst season, microburst season. Yeah, we're getting to about that time of the year where these afternoon storms, they go up quickly and then they lose all their steam at the same time, come back down and, you know, could lead to some strong surface winds. But tornado season, yeah, we're losing it here in the south and even hail season starting to become uh, harder to come by, although small hail could still be possible, at least for the southeast. Generally, just more thunder and lightning and heavy rain and even some gusty winds would be the main threat. Further north, though, could be all hazards here with these storms by the middle and end of the week. And again, stays that way for many of us, keeps on tracking through, could even get into the Northeast maybe. Like I said, you're on the train track and just a matter of if the train wants to go all the way to you by the end of this week, we'll keep you updated and keep watching it. Um, final two things I'll talk about, heat and humidity. Uh, yeah, this is our, again, I'll call it the muggy meter. It's the dew point map, but uh, the higher the number, the more muggy it's gonna feel outside basically and watch what happens. Uh, yeah, it surges north and with a vengeance, uh, and that heat and humidity fully locked in. This is by Friday afternoon. Really everyone getting into just the not so fun numbers here. Once you hit the pink and the purple, I guess that's purple, not really pink, but uh, once you hit that purple color, that's when it's just uncomfortable, downright uncomfortable out there with dew points in the 70s for the south. Uh, creeping up the Mississippi River Valley corn sweat season, right? Some of you will know about that up into the Midwest and excuse me, notice that that uh, gets all the way up into the plains. And that's going to be one of the fuel or the drivers for potential severe weather up that way here throughout the week ahead. And uh, boy, oh boy, just an ugly looking map. <laughs> we're, we're in the heat of it, folks. Uh, not quite the dog days of summer yet, but uh, it's going to start to feel like it. It's just unbearable heat and humidity out there looking likely over the middle of the month. Final map of the day, uh, rainfall. Uh, this is for the next seven days. Uh, again, I do think the South, although you know we didn't talk a lot about you in terms of severe weather, still afternoon thunderstorms that'll add up. So it's gonna be one of those patterns. Some of you get plenty of rain, others not so much. You know, you're used to it by this point. Summer in the United States is what it is. Your neighbor might have five inches of rain over the next week, and you might have half an inch. It's just the, the way it goes, uh, and really impossible to pinpoint exactly who sees it. But that's kind of the theme through the South. Now the North, again, that kind of train track. Same thing, but uh, severe weather going to be higher in chances up there. Now, I do think there will be a little bit of a, uh, a dry zone in between the two areas where we have the instability in the south for afternoon storms and the instability in the north for severe storms. And you see that little corridor I have drawn in between. Uh, again, could shift north or south a little bit, but somebody's probably going to get robbed of any uh, real rainfall over the next week. So you might need to get the sprinklers going. Also looks that way up into the extreme northeast of New England, Maine, northern Vermont, and New Hampshire. It looks quite dry generally. Generally speaking, again, some showers and storms possible, but generally speaking, if I don't smack the microphone too hard, it's the second day in a row I've done that, uh, dry up that way. So that's uh, that's what we've got here on this Monday. Again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, subscribe, hit the bell for the latest notifications. Also, I want to say thank you to everyone watching anyway. Uh, obviously, this is the more boring time of the year on the channel. I know, you know, the views are down. I expect it. I understand it. Uh, it is what it is. There's just not much to talk about. But again, hurricane season right around the corner. And trust me, I'll have you up to date on that. Uh, once we start getting some storms to form in the Atlantic coming up here soon. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow.